Hey guys, welcome back. You're hey sitting guys. on the Big Game Hunters podcast. Michael Flint, Roy McMillan. This is part two. Part two. Part, part two. two. Part two. We're bringing you the next part of our first show that we did earlier in the week. This is how to ace your interview. Blew how up. To, blew how, up to blow, how to blow up, how to bang it out of the park. These are common interview questions that we're going to be bringing to you today that are going to get brought up in your interview. If, you know, if you're a hiring manager, you're a decision maker, this is what they're typically going to ask. And we're going to bring you the heat today. Michael, what's another question? Give them to them. Give them to them. What's the question that they're going to experience and how they're going to ace it? Well, let's start with the most obvious obvious. Why are you leaving your current job? What's the issue? Are you advancing your career professionally? Are you unhappy at work? Uh, did you not get that promotion? Do you need to take that next step in your career? Are you looking to change industry verticals? All those things kind of play into your decision making. But I think that's the most obvious question that we would ask is, why are you leaving your current place of employment? Yeah, I think there should be a, I think there should be a, a, a point of honesty here because I think a lot of hiring managers uh, appreciate honesty when you answer that question. You know, why do you want to leave your current job? Why do you want to leave your current place of employment? Well, you know what? Things have actually changed uh, over the last you know uh, uh, two two months, and uh, I was waiting to see it through, but nothing actually happened. Yep. And uh, I just feel that you know it's time. It's time for you to move on and potentially explore other opportunities. And that's potentially why I'm here today. Yeah, I, I think you should put some structure around it. You know, and and. and that structure should be about advancing yourself professionally. You know, perhaps you want to see a product or a project through from beginning to end. You know, yeah. you're, lo you're looking for an opportunity that will enhance your resume and enhance yeah. your ability to grow yourself professionally and ultimately, ultimately to earn some more money. Yeah, and I and I wouldn't uh, and I wouldn't like say something like you know even if you've left your current job already and, and on your resume it still says present, I would still be honest with them and say, listen, you know, I'm currently still not currently employed employed at that position. I just haven't managed to take it off my resume yet. And here's the reason why, and then provide more color and depth into I, I, into into your answer, so you can provide the hiring manager with an informed it, it, uh, answer to that question. Right. And speaking of color. If the question comes up, why were you fired? I mean, that's color in itself. That's why, I don't know. I don't know why were you fired. Well, you, you know take, more than anybody why you were fired, right? So Take the high road, first and foremost. Take the high road, no you know. No whinging, sp stick to the facts and take the high road. No yeah. one wants to hear you throw anybody under the bus. Yeah, that's right. Nobody wants to hear you throw anyone under the bus. You don't want to throw mud in anybody's face. Listen, it didn't work out and I decided to move on or decided to get terminated, whatever the reason may be. Whatever right? the reason, I think, you gotta, I think you gotta, uh, you know, you, it's such a challenging question. Why did you get, why did you get fired? Why did you get fired from that job? What happened? What went wrong? <laughs> I, think, I think hiring managers will be objective about that, you know, especially if you're not currently working um, uh, at, at your current job and, and, and you are basically coming from unemployment into a new opportunity you're going to have to provide a direct report reference. But um, yeah. uh, just be truthful. I mean, uh, I think everybody can tell when you're being genuine. Sometimes things don't work out. And sometimes that, that to me, is a more motivated candidate because they're not going to make that same mistake twice. That's right. So whatever that may be, move on and take the high road. I can't ne stress it enough. Totally. Next question is, can you explain why you train career paths so often? Can you explain why you've jumped around so much? How do you answer that question? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, you're in the, the first third of your career. You know, if uh, you get out of university or college and uh, you're, you're, in, um, you're taking a career path where you might not know exactly where your strengths lie and you want to be exposed to different elements of the business uh, or different um, aligned verticals that, 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 that just give you that real work experience, to me, that's totally explainable. But at a certain point, you're going to have to commit because if you don't have the intangible uh, loyalty, commitment, uh, focus, uh, perseverance within a responsibility that you you've accepted. You're gonna you're going to weaken your negotiation power down the road. And, and typically, yeah, you know, companies they'll be cautious with you. Yeah, don't be thrown off by this question, right? Explain to me why you've jumped around so much. Why is there gaps in your resume? I think you just need to say, listen, if it was a contract, I was only there on a period of contract. Yeah, this contract was true. only running for three to six months, and then it was extended to an eight month period. And then we shook our hands, powder our backs. I have glowing references from that from that from that contract period I really enjoyed it there I liked it and moved on to my next era of placement you know I took on a took on a took on a position for the next you know six to 12 months it really wasn't quite working out management trains this you know de decisions at the upper level happen they cut the commissions whatever it may be I think be honest get document to the point that. Do document, document it, it for sure. uh, even put include it in your resume so they kind of already have the answers and they're aware of why you've moved yep. uh, each position but make it short precise to the point don't go rambling on about you know I did this 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 and this they don't care straight to the point and move on this is why I'm here. You've always got to take about the reasons why you've moved around and hopped and there's so many gaps in your resume. It's all you got to change that from being such a negative concept because most people do think it's negative yeah. to a positive concept and getting them to focus on, well, this is why I'm here. 
because I understand that this opportunity can provide me with this, 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 and this, and that's what I'm looking for. I've had the chance to experience many different positions, many different bosses. It really made me understand where I want to position my future yeah. and what type of company I want to position it with. Uh, I always like to remind candidates to get ahead of the obvious questions. You know, we, we see a lot of resumes on a regular basis, so for us, it is an obvious question, and to the hiring manager, it is also an obvious question. So if that exists on your resume, get ahead of it. Explain it. Be proactive uh, because it, it's, it's better to volunteer the information than have it pulled out of you. That's right. Yeah, totally. Huge. Got to volunteer that information yep. because what will happen is they will dig. They will dig anyway. They will dig and, you know, it can be it can be intense. It can, can get uncomfortable. We hear it from candidates all the time. Oh, you know, I just got asked this question and I really, really wasn't expecting it. I'm not too sure how it went. Typically, yeah, that's a no. Then I'm going to move on to the next candidate, right? So you got to have, you got to prepare yourself yep. and, uh, and, and for that question because it's going to come. Why have you moved around so much, right? Why is there so much, so many gaps in your resume? Certain industries, it's understandable, but most industries, it isn't yep. unless it's a justifiable reason. Yeah, agree. Right, and then get them and start thinking positively. Move on. Focus on the business, as we said. Right. Yep. Also, they're going to ask you what what if we were to bring you on board, uh, Mr. Smith. Explain to me what your first 30, 60, 90 days would look like working here. Good what's your game plan. plan? What's the agenda? Right. You got to go into these situations as if you already have the job, whatever the role is. And, and part of that is orientation, onboarding, uh, learning the relationships, whether it's customer facing or internally within our organization, whatever the case may be. But for you to secure that job, at some point you have to go from candidate to employee. And the earlier you make that transition in your head, the better prepared you are to actually go in and, and own it. And, and that's a big part of, uh, yeah. listen, all things being equal, you're going to give the job to the person that wants it the most, the person that's the most prepared. So be prepared, put in the extra effort and map out a strategy that starts from day one and have that mindset. I, I have more candidates that have successful placements based on just going in with that level of confidence and, yeah. and basically and an, agenda. An, agenda. and an agenda, an agenda, for an sure. agenda, for a sure. plan, a timeline, and really voicing what their plan is going to be to the hiring manager because it's a good conversation starter when you're in an interview. If you have a plan in place yep. and you're and you're speaking to them and you can articulately un and you understand your plan that you've written, you've you know you've digested it, you've you've practiced it, you've rehearsed it before your interview, and you're going, hey. You know what, Susan, Steve, this is my plan. This is what I've come up with. This is what I plan on doing for you. This is what my first 30 days is gonna look like. This is what my six days is gonna look like. This is what my 90 days is gonna look like. This is how I'm going to execute on this plan. These yeah. are the systems and, and tools and resources I need from you in order to achieve these goals. Is this something that you're looking for? Would you be open to me focusing on a plan like this? That's true, but, right? but, but before Let's have, you, have a discussion about it. That's true, but before you volunteer that information about your plan, spend time asking questions and yeah. listening. Make sure that the plan that you've put in place is aligned with with what they're telling you yeah. in terms of their expectations totally. for the job. So you can have that framework, that's great, that means you're, you're yep. proactive, but you have to first make sure you listen, because if you just go in and say, Don't I'm, say <laughs> I'm coming in and I'm doing this, this, and this, bang, you're slap out. that plan on their desk, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna be like, whoa, what? bro, this guy's a bit too enthusiastic, right? <laughs> yeah. He's down he well, before you can run. Yeah. He doesn't listen, right? So yeah. listen. Uh, listen, I think that's something you can potentially bring out at the end, right? Well, hey man, I actually, you know what? Just out of curiosity, I put I put a short plan together. This is kind of what I like to do uh, from from from, from, where, from where I'm currently working, yep. and it works for me. It's just it's just my thought process. It's just I've jotted some things down. Let me know your thoughts on it. Agreed. No, I right? agree with that. Yep. Um, sure. Next question that you're definitely going to get asked is, what do you do outside of work? Who are you? What do you do for fun? Right? Are you into sports? Are you a, are you are you a golfer? Or do you do you enjoy riding? Yeah, I see more and do more you of this. Do you listen to music? Do you go to concerts? What are you doing in your free time? Tell me about yourself. I'm curious yeah. to know, I'm interested. The employer always wants to know what you bring to the party in terms of what they're hiring you for, but we see more and more companies making sure that you're also a good dinner guest. And that that means getting to know you a little bit and having the comfort zone, comfort level or comfort zone yeah. to bring you over and, and have a beer and, and, and shoot the shit with you. Can you say that on podcasts? You can, you okay. can. <laughs> good thing is I, we own the podcast so we control the content. But uh, anyways, what do you do outside of work? You know, just answer that question articulately, be honest. Yep. You know, if, you, if you're not a sports minded person, that's fine. If you're not into reading or if you're into fishing, whatever it may be, just say, cause you never know. But what's also a good thing to do is do a little bit of homework on the people that you're interviewing with. And if there's something that's of interest to you, that's also of interest to them. That's right. 
get Absolutely. that out there. Get that out there. Shared actually, you know what? I actually, golfed, activities. I actually golfed the Hamilton Golf and Country Club last week, and uh, I, I, I heard Steve, you're quite the golfer, right? It breaks the ice, right? It breaks the ice. It creates some good that's positive right. dialogue. I think that's very important. And a lot of people don't actually do that because they haven't researched the hiring people. They don't. They haven't researched the people that they're interviewing. Look them up on LinkedIn. Look all the way at the bottom. See what they do for fun. Do you that's like right. wine? If you're a wine connoisseur, then talk to you about your best wines, right? This is what this is what's going to create that relationship. Going to create that are you a pet lover create yeah. that bond so thank you so much guys for tuning in you're sitting on the big game hunters podcast michael flint rory mcmillan make go sure you subscribe to our network i was gonna say go out nate the ace that interview go out and ace it go out we want you to ace that interview we want you to get the job you want to continue to help as many people as we can and we're bringing you shows each and every week stay tuned for michael more. flint rory mcmillan we're bringing the heat <laughs> see you next week see you next week